Hi there, so this is our bike generator um, in all of its glory, finally kind of uh, set up here. So the various components that we have um, of the generator to get it to work is um, we have, this is the battery, so this is pretty much the crux of the whole thing. We want to charge the battery um, using the bike and run things at the same time while we're charging it, but then be able to disconnect everything from the system and just run um, up to 100 watts, lighting, cell phone charging, computer charging, whatever you need to do for a certain period of time, um, you know, if you don't have access to energy at, or electricity at any given point in time. So the main, the generator that we're using to do this is um, this alternator, this is straight out of a um, Ford, it's a Ford 3G alternator, and it has a built-in voltage regulator. So what happens is the uh, user will pedal the bike, the back tire is then connected um, to the rotor shaft on the alternator. This is about 26 inches, this is about 3 inches, um, so we get roughly 8 to 1 um, gearing ratio. So for every one turn this makes, this makes about eight turns. So this then will spin um, an, uh, a coil of wires inside of the alternator which draws a current through um, this, this cable which is hooked up to the positive lead on the battery. This then goes through to a switch and so we want this to be switched just so that uh, when the bike isn't being used, it's not constantly draining energy from the battery. So the user will hop on the bike, start pedaling, build up momentum, and then flip on this switch which will allow current to flow from the battery into the rotor coil inside of the alternator. Uh, that will create a magnetic field inside of the alternator and that will spin within another stator coil. And when that happens, it's just like basic electromagnetic theory states, when a magnetic field is spinning or, or changing uh, within a closed loop, it will uh, induce a current within that loop. So uh, when that's first turned on, of course, it also generates an electromotive force, which will resist the, um, the pedaling of the user. So the user will actually experience a resistive hump of sorts. Um, that will make it really difficult to pedal for a second, but that's easily overcome and can actually be adjusted by this resistor Which is also hooked up to the switch. It's a 20 watt 25 or sorry uh, 20 ohm 25 watt uh, Resistor that regulates the current if the current is too high It's gonna be very difficult to pedal if it's too low the user won't be able to pedal fast enough to generate a current coming out So once we have a current coming out from the battery post uh, it'll flow into the battery, and then we have a sensor lead that is also attached um, from the uh, positive terminal on the battery to uh, the voltage regulator on the alternator. So this will ensure that the voltage doesn't go above 15 volts on the battery. If it does go above 15 volts, then we risk hydrogen evolution within the battery, and it could combust, which is a big problem. Uh, but this is basically how automobile um, charging systems work. We're just doing it on a smaller battery with the idea of powering home electronics um, or simple lighting, something like that, as opposed to a vehicle. So right now we have it hooked up from the battery through um, a simple cigarette outlet that you'd find in a car through a 15 amp fuse to make sure that we don't overdrive anything that we have just in case the current for whatever reason comes out too, too high from the alternator um, into a 130 watt inverter which is now plugged into LED lights and um, my cell phone. Um, it's, it's charging up my cell phone which I'm very grateful for. Um, so right now what's happening is um, there, of course, is no nobody pedaling, so we're just draining down current off of the battery. Uh, you can see that right now on this voltmeter, it's slowly going down. Um, it's oscillating back and forth between 12 and 11.9 volts. And then we have an ammeter that will register the current coming out of the alternator. And um, this is a meter that we can use um, to determine the rotations per minute of the alternator. Uh, Coil, the alternator uh, rotor so that we can compare everything together and be able to plot um, rotational speed of the alternator along with power and see what our power output is. So that's the setup. We're going to have our friend Andrew hop on the bike in a minute and um, test it out. Go ahead. So this is that kind of normal speed, kind of speed up.
Cool.